Hello, good morning. Grace and peace be multiplied to you all in Jesus' name. I want you to invite your friends as we um, continue. I think it's John chapter 6 this morning. You ready for John chapter 6 this morning? Oh, I need to charge this stuff. Aka Nani, where have you been? I have missed you. Aka, teach me that smile, that apostolic. Get this smile for the man of God. That's all I need to blow. If I learn that smile, it's finished, Jesus said. So we're reading the Bible every morning because there's there's something we believe as. We just like to shout amen in the morning. We don't want to read the Bible. And so that's why I have decided to be part of the solution and not just talk about the problem. So every morning we were reading the book of John. So we are actually studying the book of John. Can you imagine that um, a time we come where you would be, you would say you've read the whole of John. For those of you who've been following every day, at least you've read one book in the Bible from beginning to end. All right, guys, I invite your friends to join in. Um, um, it's going to be 27, 28, 29 conference. The advert is out already. Please, I beg you, share it on your platform. Talk about it. If you're coming from London Church for the conference, Lagos Church has provided accommodation for you the whole of Friday, Saturday. You check out on Sunday morning on your way to church. If you're coming from London Church for the conference, Lagos Church has provided a, um, accommodation for you. If you're coming flying all the way from London, people like Pastor um, Mosun, Ola, um, that Friday, Saturday, we have an accommodation um for you please i beg you in the name of the lord talk to your friends plan towards it the conference is i pray that you yield to that temptation nicks because it is a good temptation it's a temptation from god god is tempting you to come to the conference because he wants to bless you the temptation is a setup for your blessing glory to god mm. did i just preach i come people like some people here who even Sunday morning, before they come, they would have started preaching. That are in Lekki phase one, we love you too. The same people when I went to London did not protocol me. But it's alright. Dami Shogs, Pastor Dami, are you sure you don't want to come? Are you sure you don't want to come? It is going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Please do your best. Talk to people about the conference. And um, and we will go from there. Glory to God. 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 We're coming from the other side of Lagos. Any accommodation for big, big girls like you? Stop it. Um, make sure you are there. And please, conference, come on time. Get your seat on time. Get ready. God is up to something. There will be a pastor's meeting on Friday morning, I will say good to see you. I will see you in June, P Flow. Okay, no problem. I'll see you too. I'll be here waiting for you. Um, the advert is I'll talk to people about it. Somebody remind me, John chapter 6. Where did we stop? John chapter 6. Glory to God. John chapter 6. Where did we stop? See, I was reading something in Matthew today. It was really beautiful. I was reading something in Matthew the early hours of this morning. Really beautiful. John, John chapter 6. Where did we stop? Somebody help me, remind me, where did we stop? John chapter 6. I think we stopped at verse 29. So today we continue from verse 30 to the end. Thank you very much, Prince Joseph. Backwards is Joseph Prince. So, um, so we read from verse 30 to the end this morning. From verse 30 to the end. Thank you very much, Izini. Thank you very much, isn't it? Guys, don't don't miss conference. Don't miss conference. Nancy, that has been promising to come to Nigeria for over two years now. Uh, just been giving me like this, like this. Come for conference. Make sure you don't miss the conference. God is up to something. Let's make our declaration this morning. Say after me in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, I am the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus, all my sins are forgiven. I am eternally blessed. I am forever forgiven. I am irrevocably righteous. I am eternally blessed. I am forever forgiven. I am irrevocably righteous. I am eternally blessed. 
and forever forgiving and irrevocably righteous. I am eternally blessed. I am forever forgiven and I am irrevocably righteous. All my sins are forgiven and I am blessed of the Lord in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. We we'll begin John chapter 6 from verse 30. John chapter 6 from verse 30. I'm reading from verse 30 all the way to the end today because on Saturdays I am not available because I'm preparing for Sunday morning. Sunday morning is going to be awesome. I continue the series I started last week. Grace is working for me. Grace is working for me. People have got I'm not intimidated by the numbers. If I was prophesying, I'm sure the numbers would be high. But people don't like to learn the scriptures. And I'm determined to teach the Bible verse after verse. So we started John chapter 6 verse 1 to 29 yesterday. We continue from verse 30 to the end today by God's grace. And everybody said amen. I, I read from the King James Version. You may read other versions from the comfort of your home. But just make sure you're reading the word of God. Today you would have read um, a decent portion of scriptures. Uh, of the scripture and the word of life that will change your life forever. The feeding of the believer is more is very important. You need to feed to grow. And how do you feed? You feed by feeding on the word of God's grace. Not every part, not every teaching from the pulpit can bless you, but feeding by the word of God's grace. First time here, first time to on YouTube on Wednesday, God glued. Thank you very much. You need to come to church. If you're in Lagos, it will bless you completely. Amen. John chapter 6, I begin reading from verse 30. Rick here, thank you very much. My show max is better now. That was an internet problem, like you mentioned. They said, therefore unto him, what sign showed thou then that we may see unbelievers need sign and believe thee, what, what does thou work? So unbelievers always want a sign. Believers, we don't see to believe, we believe to see. Glory to God. Um, verse 31, our father did eat manna in the desert. And as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. That means the bread Moses gave to you is not heaven's bread. It's agege bread. Agege bread from the sky. No, this is just me talking, no, please. And I'll say, ah, it's like you get bread and I give them. Uh, so what Pastor Ferry said, no, no. Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Jesus is the bread of life. Oh God, what happened to my eyes this morning? Jesus is the bread of life. Glory to God. Jesus is the bread of life. Glory to God. For the bread of God is He. So the bread of God is a person. The bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. So the bread of God is not in a nylon bag. The bread of God is a person. The bread of God is a person. Don't, don't worry about my eyes, I'll be fine. The bread of God is a person. Uh, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, Evermore, give us this bread. Give us this bread. Since the bread of God is a person, show us and give us this bread. Glory to God. Give us this bread. Then Jesus said unto them, reminds me of the woman who said to Jesus, give us this water. Give me this water. I need water that I would never test again. Give me this water. Amen. Verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Can you see that? If you come to me, you will not be hungry. If you believe in me, your thirst will be, will be, will be, um, um, will be, will be, will be satisfied. Yeah? It says, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you that you also have seen me and believe me not. Verse 37. And all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me will I in no wise cast out. John chapter 6. 
John chapter 6. He that cometh to me will I in no wise cast out. So that means the grace of God has no boundaries. His acceptance sees no imperfection. The grace of God has no boundaries. His acceptance sees no imperfection. That means if you will come to Jesus, whether you're a prostitute, whether you're a deacon or a devil or you are whatever you think you are, if you can come to Jesus, Jesus is assuring you, I will no wise, I will not in any way refuse you. Jesus doesn't refuse anybody. Just come to Jesus. That's the, that's the message of the promiscuity of the grace of God. That's the message of the promiscuity of the grace of God. No matter who you are, no matter what you have done, you can come to Jesus. No matter who you are, no matter what you have done, you can come to Jesus. Arms wide open. That's what he did on the cross. That was God embracing man. When they stretched him wide and hung him high, when his two hands did open on the cross, that was God embracing man. That was God saying, come to me. That was God saying, my blood can fix you. That was the blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. That was the embrace of God right there. That was when humanity and divinity settled their enmity. I didn't mean to rhyme, but that's how divinity and humanity settled their enmity. For God was in Christ reconciling reconciliation. So God reconciled the problem that man had with God. It was not man who negotiated the reconciliation. It was God who negotiated the reconciliation. Can you imagine um, being insulted by your younger brother, your younger cousin, your nephew, your nieces, just such a child. And you're the one going to meet them the next morning in school. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's resolve this. That's what God did. God was the one who initiated reconciliation. That's how God behaves. You're always accepted. You got that done. Now you me. You're always accepted. Glory to God. And Jesus said unto them, I'm the bread of life which came from heaven. said unto you, you know why it's cast out. Verse 38. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. That means I came down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him that sent me. Verse 39. And this is the Father's will, glory to God, which hath sent me, that of all which he had given me, I should lose nothing. Did you see that? That this is the Father's will, that for, of everybody that he has given me, I would lose none. So when people ask me all the time, and I think it's controversial for people who do not understand the promiscuity of the grace of God because it's not something your mind can comprehend. Can a believer lose salvation? That's a wrong question. The right question is, can God lose a believer? Can God lose a believer? That's the right question. It's not, can, no, can God lose it? And the Father's will, which had sent me, that of all that he had, all which he had given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Did you see that? Did you see that? And I said to you that the whole Bible, the summary of the Bible is www finish. The will of the Father, the work of the Son, and the witness of the Spirit. The will of the Father, the work of the Son, and the witness of the Spirit. No, I can't let God down. I'm not holding on to him. He's the one holding on to me. I can't let God down because I'm not holding on to him. He's the one holding on to me. He's the one holding on to me. So once you understand that, it's, it's, it, it delivers you from the pressure to perform. That's what religion does. But the gospel of God's grace gives you enablement to become. Because you have to be to do. You don't do to be. Glory to God. I have to read verse 39 again. It's so powerful. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he had given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Glory to God. Verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up on that last Is it clear? Is it clear or is, this is clear enough? He didn't say anyone who believes on me and is behaving well, oh, there's nothing wrong. That's what you should teach. You should behave well. 
But heaven is not a reward for good behavior. Heaven is a gift. It's in the salvation package. The believer is locked up in Christ. Is it crystal clear enough? And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him, they have everlasting life. It's English, everlasting life. The everlasting father cannot give birth to temporary sons. There's no caveat. There's no condition to that. And I will raise him up at the last day. Period. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. They didn't even pay attention to the fact that he said, I will give you eternal life. They were worried about bread and fish. Agige was on their mind. And they said, it's not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know. How is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? There are people in your family who want to keep you familiar. I said something so powerful, I don't know if you heard me. The people in your family who know you, they just, they just want to keep you familiar. They don't see you the way God sees you. Is it not Naomi? Who is Anawao? Hey, not be, not be, presents rare with this. Now, what? Well, can't they talk like, say, in a special breed, though? I know the mama now. Wait, he, we be first cousin. It shall be all this one they do because he called the, called the show for you. No! They just want to see you from the standpoint of your history and not your destiny. They know your history, but they don't know your destiny. We know his father. Ego shocked them. Huh? Now, what on Aka before? We know I'm. I just shocked. He thought the art movie, man. He not agree. He don't. They. Uh, we know him. Now nah, we be first cousin. E for that uh, uncle Tun. Now nah, oh, she be ring. She be flower girl. I be page boy. Now nah, so we take grow up. Now I be smart, you know. Talk carry boy for happy to the move. Tell the talk. Be big things. They talk. No, no. People just don't want to see your destiny. They want you to be stuck in your history. Do not feel bad about it. They did it to Jesus. Just keep focused. They'll catch up with your destiny. They'll catch up with your destiny. You hear me what I'm saying? And this is the way... What verse, what verse was that? What verse? Yeah. What verse was that? Okay, verse 40, 42. Yeah, 42. And they said, Is it not this Jesus, the son of G Joseph, whose father... We know him now. Now, wow. Hey, are you listening to him? Like, are you? Hey. Hey, if you see, if you see English, we should uh, explain ourselves about the vision when God give up. No, wow. Hey, not to me, Musa, they see forget to. Don't listen to them. Just focus on your destiny. I will not be stuck in my history. I have come into my destiny. That's a good prayer point. I will not be stuck in my history. We went, not be covering at all of us go. Now, wow. We went, we go to school together now. Are you tired? I will not be stuck in my history. I'm moving into my destiny. If you want time that, if you, you know, we just the rough and the scene that I slain anyhow. They just want you to be stuck in your history. They don't want you to go into your destiny because they cannot see God's purpose for your life. Because mystery, misery rather likes company. They want all of us to be in that same position where we don't have what to do. I will not be stuck in my history. I'm moving into my destiny. Can we make that confession this morning? That's powerful. And that's, I feel the no usha, but koshi vala has this. I will not be stuck in my history. I'm moving into my destiny. Could it be possible that there are many people in your family who are just stuck in their history? Nobody goes above this place. I'm a line crosser. I'm a barrier breaker. I will not be stuck in my history. I come into my destiny by the breath of the Almighty, by the Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Verse 43. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, More, more not among yourself. No man can come to me except the Father which had sent me draw him and I will raise him up on the last day. Let me say this to you. This is very powerful. The fact that they know your history doesn't mean you should agree with them about your history. 
always speak. You, Jesus didn't say, I know you poor memory. You are right. I'm the son of Joseph. Oh, Mary is my mother. Oh, you are right. to oh, Auntie Mingo. Auntie Mingo, sorry. If I didn't get you before, let me just get you. No, 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 no. Jesus didn't do any of that. Jesus went affirming his relationship with Abba. Some of you, when they talk about your history, you not agree with your history because that's what the devil wants you to do. The devil wants you to agree with your history. Anything you give attention to gives you direction. So once you pay attention to your history, you start reversing backwards. You start reversing. That's tautology. When you reverse it, you're going backwards. You start going backwards. When you pay attention to your destiny, you move upwards and forward. Are you seeing that? So Jesus said to them, uh -uh, Don't murmur amongst yourself. No man can come to me except the Father, which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day. Glory to God. Glory to God. Verse 45. It is written in the prophets. And they shall be all thought of God. Every man therefore that had heard and had learned of the Father cometh unto me. Verse 46. Not that any... See, this 46 is very important. I have been saying, Not that any man had seen the Father save he which is of God. He had seen the Father... Jesus is declaring, all those guys in the Old Testament did not see the Father. Clear in Scripture. Very, very, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. You see, it's everlasting life. I am the bread of life. He keeps reiterating who he is in his assignment, his purpose, in his Christology, and not in his humanity and his historology. Jesus um, not very, very assumed to he that believeth in me has, has everlasting life. Verse 48 I am the bread of life. Your father, eh, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. That means they ate that bread and they died. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Glory to God. They ate that bread, they died. But this bread, you eat it, you do not die because I am the bread of life. Glory to God. Jesus not be agege bread, not living bread. Jesus not be agege bread. Not. He keep reiterating who, who you are, your position in Christ. You keep reiterating who you are, your position in Christ. Glory to God. Verse 50. This is the bread which come down from heaven. That a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread. Ah, I love Jesus. I love in the yarn they go, in the talking on the go. In it is what it is. This is who I am. Some of you need to stop. You, 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 don't, you don't let your familiarity stop you from speaking about your destiny because that's history. So they keep saying, but you know you, you know you fail that time. No, I'm no longer a failure. I'm who God says I am. This is where I'm going to. You, you keep affirming it. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is the flesh which I will give to the life of the word. Give for the life of the word. Glory to God. 52. The Jews therefore strove you know what i meant they were the jews therefore quarreled amongst themselves saying how can this man give us his flesh to eat he was talking about his death his burial and resurrection that when i die and you receive me you will receive my life glory to god then jesus said unto them verily verily i say i love jesus so he, he, Never let their side talk intimidate your straight talk. Oh God, that's a beautiful one. Never let their side talk intimidate your straight talk. Keep talking. Keep talking. 53. It was a term. It was a terminology that since they ate bread by chewing, we eat his flesh by believing, isn't it? They eat bread by chewing. We eat this bread by believing. Isn't it? Did you get that? They ate bread from heaven by chewing and they died. We eat this bread of life, which is, which is his flesh, by believing. So what they chewed to eat, we believe to eat. It's powerful. 
what they chewed to eat, we believe to eat. Glory to God. 53, Jesus kept talking. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in him, in you. Whosoever ate my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. How do you get eternal life? By believing. By believing. John 3, 16, for God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes. So when he was talking about eating my flesh and drinking my blood, he was talking about believing in me, not communion. He's talking about believing in me, clearly. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Figure of speech, thank you, Isina, you got that. It was a figure of speech. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the faith, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. So Jesus is repeating. He that eateth of the bread shall live forever. This thing said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, said This is a hard saying. This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Hi. Why was it a hard saying to them? Why was it a hard saying to them? This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Why do you think it was a hard saying to them? They were not born again. So they did not understand. He's trying to transfer a video file on Nokia 3310. He does not have the capacity to receive it. So it was brain block like who? Is me trying to teach my two years old daughter for the math. For the math. And she cannot. They didn't have the capacity. So this is a hard thing. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured. So even his disciples, they were not born again. Like people keep saying, eh, what of Judas? Didn't Judas, what of Tom? No, 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 they were not born again. He said unto them, doth this offend you? 62. What? And if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. I feel his disciples, man, can't lie to the unrenewed mind. It is. It sounds like can, yes, cannibalism. Like what is this guy talking? Would you eat your? Are we not cannibals? What is? What is wrong with you? So it, it was too. It was beyond. It was beyond their level of comprehension at that time, because the spirit of God was not released. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, what verse was I just now? Verse 63. Verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That means the words I'm speaking unto you, you cannot understand it in your flesh. Your mind cannot grasp in its entirety and totality. They are spirit and they are life. 64. And there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and should betray him. Who was he speaking about there? Judas. He believed not. So that's why believing doesn't come by association. Believing comes by revelation. So you can be close to believers. Doesn't mean you are a believer. Believing doesn't come... Judas was close to Jesus, was not born again, did not believe in Jesus. Uniformity is no unity. That we are all wearing a shwebi doesn't mean we all agree on the party. Shoot, he bought him also. Okay, good. Uh, uniformity is no unity. Association, believing is personal and it is revelation, is not mental assent. It doesn't come by association. By the reason of my grandmother being a deaconess and my father being a bishop, 
uncles are dicking. My daughter is a pastor, so therefore, you can't even tell me anything about God. On, on my, on my dear, if you have not received Jesus by revelation, forget it. You are not born again. God has no grandchildren. We are all children of God. Mm -hmm. 65. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Did you see this? No, is it? Did you see this? I have been saying, do you see this? From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with. That means Jesus entered a point where they were like, ah, no. We they understand this guy the toxins in the hill, in the in the in the increased bread and fish. Let him just stay there. Let's let him not go into this part. You don't be it don't be too much. It was too much for them. They left him. Maybe people just they maybe people just they talk about those or maybe people know they I mean know they talk about all those tight, all those other things. Making make it just leave those side. Making just they make they talk about those Jesus loves you. Make it not go deep. Uh -huh. Now then be that. Jesus preached one deep message. You will eat my flesh by believing and drink my blood by believing. Jesus lost the disciples. Maybe people, maybe maybe people know they talk about those other things. Make it just day, make it just day, make it just day that regular. Make it just day the like those simple ones. You you don't need to rock the boat. You don't need to be breaking. T Jesus preached one message. His disciples left him. They could not understand him. So those who have left me because I stay with the gospel. Aka, I'm in good company. I'm in the company of Jesus. I'm in the company of Paul. I'm not trying to be popular. I'm just trying to be effective. That's that's I'm just trying to be effective. Jesus lost followership. Oh. Jesus lost followership. Oh. Why would he feel bad today? Because our people into the you know they see vision, you know they see this, you know they talk. I'm not I'm preaching the word of God's grace. People like Aka who's been following me for, for years, morning colonia. That's why I be I have not changed. The, the, the numbers, I'm not trying to beat 50,000, 20,000. I'm not, I'm not in competition with anybody. This one I'm doing. Peace when they scatter for ground, not the digo. I am doing it consistently. I'm building a generation who are not just shouting amen, amen in the morning, but understanding who God is and understanding who they are in Christ and what God has done in Christ for them, period. This is more important for me than people just running after seeing Jesus as a means to an end. 66. From that time, many disciples, not some, from, because Jesus had the 70, Jesus had the 12, Jesus had the 3. From that time, many of his disciples, thank God for people like Rekia who has been with me from the first Sunday and have not, they've not been offended to leave the church. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of you who have stayed with this man. But I, I need to do an, an appreciation service for you guys. Thank you so much. Many of, not, not some, not a handful, many of his disciples went back. Many, not some. And walked no more with him. Since 2020, I've been doing this. 2020, just preaching the word of God's grace, just liberating people from religion. And Aka, they laugh at me that you know you won't make money like this. I really and truly do we collect offering here? But that's not if you are led to give, give. If you're not led to give, no problem. I encourage you to give, but that's all I will do. Yeah? But you know the painful thing. People will not leave this young and go to the other places where they are collecting money from them. But you'll be fine. That's my business. Then Jesus said unto the twelve. So it was not the twelve who left. It was the seventy. Who remember when I talked about the constituents, your comrades, and your confidant? Jesus had a constituent of seventy people. Jesus had comrades of twelve people. 
Jesus had confidence of three people, Peter, James, and John. So from this, who remembers that teachings? From this, it was not the comrades that left. It was the constituents that left. Trust me, your constituents will always leave you when you get into deep things. That's how I know that you're not my member. Isn't it was doing off and on at the beginning, off and on. I was looking at her. I no pressure, nothing. After a while, she jumped in fully. I was Vincent, the church started in her house. She was doing off and on. After a while, she jumped in. No pressure. But when you preach deep things, constituents will jump out. So it's the constituents that left Jesus, not his comrades, not his confidants. Jesus said unto the twelve, which are his comrades, Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe. And are sure that thou art Christ, the Son of the Living God. So, Isine, let me ask you a question: Who are these constituents that left? The people who came for miracle of bread and fish. Isine, let me ask you because we spoke about this yesterday. Who are these people who left by the seventy guys? People who came for bread and fish. They didn't come for any deep teaching. They didn't really believe in Jesus. They just saw Jesus as a means to an end. They came for signs and wonders. You got that right. Those are the constituents. They came for, they don't want your teaching. Oh God prophesied, not the, that I prophesied in the name of Jesus that this weekend, hey, amen. He don't the charge, he don't the charge. He don't vex, he don't have anointing. Constituents, you will have the crowd. I'm not looking for constituents. I'm looking for comrades and confidants. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ. So they stayed because they believed he was the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's why we stay with him. Because we know that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God, not because of what we can get from him. Jesus is not a means to an end. Jesus is the end of discussion itself. They were tasters, not, drink, not drinkers. They, they still believed in the law, but just wanted to enjoy the bread and fish from Jesus. Thou art Christ, the Son of God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Ah, Mimi got it right. They were pilatives. Pilative people. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. For it, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. The devil that Jesus chose in chapter in verse 70, I'm replying in Gozi. It was a devil that was important for his destiny. I hope you got that. It was a devil that was important to his destiny. So no matter how you try to chase some evil away, there are some evil that will show up. And they think they are doing you evil, but they are fulfilling God's plan for your life. I hope you got that. So there are people who you want, you don't want them anymore. But guess what? They will not leave because they are in, integral, pivotal for the fulfillment of God's plan for your life. Judas had to betray Jesus to bring salvation to the world. So when you see the frenemies and the enemies, don't worry. They think that they are destroying you, but they are pushing you into God's plan. This is powerful for your life. You think the gossip was designed to destroy you? You think that last breakup was going to destroy you? You think the hardship was designed to take you out, but it's designed to fulfill God's grand plan for your life. 
God's purpose for your life will be fulfilled. God's purpose for your life will be fulfilled. It will be fulfilled. So that de demons and devils, are not, they can't destroy you. God will use them to fulfill his... Judas thought he was striking a deal to make money. He didn't know he was initiating my redemption and your redemption. Look at you. If they didn't break up with you, you would not have seen this person that you are married with. You'd have married a devil, a beaten, not a husband. You'd have married a knife, not a wife. So your blessing was in their decision to re re reject you. Joseph's brothers had to sell Joseph because he had to come to his purpose. So you, you need to start seeing all the devils around you and all the haters around you properly. Now I thank my haters who didn't believe in me, who didn't give me the platform, who didn't give me the job. Aka, I love them. Who didn't trust me? Who didn't help me? Who didn't give me the funds when I needed it? Because now they pushed and propelled me into God's original purpose for my life. Now I'm where I am. I know man can take the glory because they can testify that this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our sight. You need your Judas. You need your Judas. God knows how to keep the haters who they will propel you. They can't destroy you. What they blogged about you they couldn't take you out. What they said about you couldn't stop you. How they grossly misrepresented you didn't stop you from having the job anyways. God gave you favor. Because when they talked about you so much, people started saying, What's up with that boy Aka, by the way? Why, they, why, is, why is this buzzer? Because they, they brought the attention of your helpers to you by the way they talked against you. Oh God, glory to God. They, they brought the attention of your helpers to you by the way they just talked against you. It's publicity. They did it. So Jesus had to die. Judas had to stay. So Judas disguised. He was there for an agenda. So he didn't move with the constituents. He stayed with the comrades. And guess what? He did it. Because these Judas will be the ones who would kiss you, but they won't cleave to you. But your, your confidence will cleave to you even if they don't kiss your ass. God, I just hope you got that. Your confidence, they don't have to kiss your ass, but they are cleavers. They will stay with you. But these Judases will kiss you in public, but they are selling you out. I hope you hear what I'm saying. Watch out for cleavers. Watch out for kissers. Did you hear what I said? Judas will kiss you in public, but sell you out. Cleavers won't kiss us, but they will cleave to your ass. Cleave us and kiss us. Pun intended. If you get it, get it. If you don't get it, like they say, forget about it. Cleave us and kiss us. Judas sold Jesus out with a kiss. Kiss us. Kiss us. Public people. But guess what? Your cleavers will be with you like John on the cross. They'll be down there. Cleavers. They will be with you. And even if your cleavers betray you, they will run back to you. But these kissers, watch out for your kissers. Know your cleavers. Love all of them the same, but know your constituents, know your comrades, know your confidants, know your Christ man, your Christ man. Glory to God. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Father, thank you because we have the bread of life within us. Thank you because we have eaten of that bread and we are part of that bread and that bread is Christ. Thank you for the bread of life. Thank you for the love of God in Christ. Now we pray that this life of God within us will begin to manifest in every area of our life. To the intent we decree grace is working for us. That we will not have to labor for profit 
but we have we have spirit directed profit and we are strengthened by your spirit i pray my father send the kind of unction that makes profit easy without labor upon our lives and expose us to the men who really need our gifts and our services and willing to pay premium for it deliver us from wicked and unreasonable men keep us by your grace i pray thank you for your anointing that is my anointing that i feel right here in my study it, it is released and transferred to everyone watching today to the intent that yokes are now destroyed delays moved out of the way mountains skipping like rams valleys exalted crooked road made straight valleys um made smooth and the rough part made smooth rather the glory of god is released and all flesh see together because the mouth of the lord has spoken and so this intent would be lift up your heads O ye gates be you lifted up your ancient everlasting doors we command that the gates be lifted and the doors opened up now for breakthroughs on every side. Thank you for testimonies. Thank you for breakthroughs. Thank you for house dedications. Thank you for cars dedication. Thank you for wedding ceremonies. Thank you for, for, for children's dedication. Thank you for safe child delivery. Thank you for blessings on every side. In the name of of jesus and everybody said amen amen don't miss sunday morning i'm sharing the word grace is working for you i, I started last week so i'm continuing this sunday keep your date 27th children's day parents you ain't going to school that day saturday 28th and sunday 29th 27th it's 5 30 saturday 28th is 10 a.m sunday morning 29th is 9 a.m i want to see you please i want to see you in church Please, I want to see you in church. Please come for the conference. God has a word. It will change your life completely. Stay tuned um, to the Logic platform. And I will see you guys on Sunday morning in church. And on Monday, we continue John chapter 7. Monday morning, 9 a.m. John chapter 7. Just How many of you are enjoying this Bible study? Talk to somebody about it. Talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. Talk to somebody about it. And God bless you remarkably. In Jesus' name, I love you. Have a flourishing week ahead of you. God loves you more than it ever hates you. Blessings.